بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله على سيدنا ونبينا عبد القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على على محمد وآل محمد وآل الطيبين الطاهرين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين اللهم كل وليك بحجة ابن الحسن صلواتك عليه وعلى آبائه في هذه الساعة وفي كل ساعة وليا وحافظا وقائدا وناصرا ودليلا وعينا حتى تسكنه أربك طوعا وتمتعه فيها فريضا رحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين I am very happy and grateful to Allah سبحانه وتعالى to be able to be here and um, I don't feel I am tired mashallah your energy and your light has empowered me I thank all of you for being here and I thank especially the organizers Sheikh Jahangir and Emson brothers and sisters for arranging this very useful retreat Alhamdulillah Last year, I had to be also to be present, and we had a good session on Salat. So today, the suggestion was we talk about how to perhaps plan our day in the way that can help us in our spirituality. So I share with you some ideas, but uh, I think. Uh, this is an area that needs lots of discussion because if you know how you actually utilize your time then it means that you have understood the most important thing <coughs> because the greatest capital we have is our life and to know how to use your time effectively is the greatest achievement so it's a very important topic to bless our session, I would like to start with some hadith and then my own little bit of reflections. But first with some hadith. The first hadith is what Amir al muminin reports from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rubia an Amir al Mu'minin alayhi salam an al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So, this has been narrated from Imam Ali that Imam Ali quoted Rasulullah. Annahu gal yan baghi lil aqil. Iza kana aqila. أن يكون له أربع ساعات من النهار. A person who is عاقل, not in the sense that he is just uh, mentally okay, in the sense that someone who is wise, someone who is rational, especially the prophet repeats, he says, إذا كان عاقلا, if he is really عاقل. Really thinking and uh, doing things with understanding, he should have or she should have four periods period of time during the day. You know, in our hadith, when we say sa'a. It doesn't necessarily mean 60 minutes because this is a new meaning, you know, we say sa'a 60 minutes, hour. Sa'a can mean a portion of time, a considerable amount of time. So, the first, Rasulullah says, four types of time periods. Sa'atun yunaji fiha rabbah. 
one period of time which should be there every day is a time that he or she whispers to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a time for prayer and this comes at the top because the best thing we can do is our prayer yeah so we live so that we pray yeah so that's the most important thing so we should arrange in the way that our prayer time is given a priority not that something that we use it as a filler <laughs> to sort out other things unfortunately sometimes it becomes like a filler so just at the end of my work i have a few minutes for example or you know between meal and you know going out just i say okay i cannot do anything else that's the time i pray no prayer is the time that should be given priority in planning your day second wasa'atun yuhasibu fiha nafsa the second time that we need every day is a time for reflection on our own on our own activities progress shortcomings nauzubillah sins mistakes wronging people doing zul saying things which are not proper anything good or bad that we have done or we have failed to do we have to review we have to uh, keep booking of that and try to improve this is a great practice and we have many many hadith about muhasabatun nafs we have books on muhasabatun nafs and as you know imam khazim alayhi salam said laysa minna man lam yuhasab nafsahu kull yawm if someone does not do muhasabatun nafs every day is not one of us even doing weekly is not enough must be daily then the third is sa'atun ya'ti ahl al-'ilm alladhina yansurunahu fi amr dinihi wa yansahunahu the third period of time that you need every day is a time that you allocate for learning going to the people who have knowledge who can help you in your religion who can give you good advice there must be no single day that we have not learned something new this is for everyone for teachers become more important for parents becomes more important any person who has a role to offer to others needs more knowledge but suppose you are a person that you have no role in society community family you are just for example a person that still is very young and you don't have any impact on others for yourself you need to learn so teachers parents activists scholars more so rasulullah says every day you should have a time to go to the people who have knowledge and get help with respect to your religion if you don't have access to a person that you visit in person and learn read books watch their lectures whatever is available but the best is if you can have real encounter personal encounter with people of knowledge 
some of you might have heard this from me that I say real knowledge it's a matter of passing light to the learner a few days ago we had a program for the teachers and I used this point and I want to share with you I hope everyone is very attentive I said ideas and theories are in mind okay whatever you know whatever you study whatever you hear to begin with goes to the mind and mind itself has different levels sometimes it's on the surface you have heard something but you have never grasped it you know Tawheed even you can describe Tawheed in few lines but you have never gone deep into the meaning of Tawheed but sometimes you go to deeper levels but still this all is in mind as long as it's a kind of information that you process first you preserve and memorize but then you go deeper and hopefully you can reach very good level of understanding but still this can be in mind then if you really engage with this subject if your emotions are involved then it goes to your heart so from mind something can get into the heart for example if you know about a great personality okay an alim or masumin alayhim salam you know about them maybe you know very little maybe you know a lot maybe you can even write books about them but this still can be something in your mind but if this goes into your heart then you will develop emotions about that person again emotions have different levels first level of emotional unity is expressed by happiness and joy so if i love someone then i become happy when i meet that person or think about that person or something positive happens to that person like his birth anniversary i become happy this shows that it has not remained in mind it has touched me when it is in your mind has not yet touched you but here has touched me but a deeper level is when you can have emotions which are sign of grief and sorrow so when for example you can cry for someone this shows a stronger unity okay or this is not only persons you know i'm just making it simple it can be about any subject for example you know about beauty of charity if it is in the mind it's just theory if you love to feed people if you are happy that people are fed people have enough to buy you know food dress this has touched your heart but if it goes deeper you will feel very sad when people don't have enough even if you cannot do anything for them you feel very sad so to be happy when they are happy is very important 
But to be able to have deep sadness when that person or that object is in difficulties, it's more. This is why you can easily go to a happy celebration and show joy. But you cannot go to a funeral and cry unless there is a deeper unity. Yeah? Someone can invite you to a wedding or birthday party and you can really be happy, not be cold. No, you are happy. There is some level of unity. But to be able to cry for that person's loss is deeper. But even deeper than emotions is when your ideals and values are affected by this person or that object. Because in my understanding, when you want to reach to the secret layers of someone, if you want to really understand how good is someone, you can only understand by looking at that person's ideals. Why he wants to be alive. What he wants to achieve. That's very close to the ser of every person. The secret layers of every person. So, if I can be happy, for example, for birth of Imam Mahdi Ajallallahu Ta'ala Tarajjah Sharif. If I can be excited and joyful when I know we have Imam Mahdi, this is very good. But still, this does not guarantee a deep unity. There are millions of people who celebrate birth anniversary of Imam Mahdi, which is good. But this is not yet a sign of deep connection. Then, if you are a person who cries over Ghayba of Imam Mahdi, this is a deeper level. You are sorry that you have no access to him and humanity has no access to him. But it goes further if when you are asked why you living, what you want to achieve, what are you preparing yourself for, what are you saving for, what are you learning for, then you say, I want to serve Imam Mahdi. Okay? So, these are different levels. So, what is in the mind has different levels. What is in the heart has different levels. So, I used to say in that meeting, I said, what is in the mind, you can imagine like this, is cold. It's cold. There is no warmth. What is coming from heart, it's warm. If I have written a book about charity, but has not touched my heart, what I offer is cold. You may like it, but you don't see energy. You don't see light in it. So, from a cold place in me, goes to a cold place in you. Goes to your mind. And unless you are a very spiritual person, it would only remain in your mind. Yes, if you are a very spiritual person, still you can warm it by taking it to your heart. But most of the time, when the person who says something he doesn't believe himself, for the most part, also remains just in the mind of the people. So from a cold place goes to a cold place. But it comes, if it comes from heart, it's warm. No Maybe machine steel is made to detect. 
whether this sentence is said only from mind or from heart. But your heart can detect. Maybe still we don't have any machine to detect who is saying something with sincerity and from his heart. But Allah has made hearts in the way that they sense. When it comes from heart, they open. When it comes from mind, they are closed. Unless that person himself is very, very spiritual. If you are a very spiritual person, even if you hear something from a kafir and you find it nice, you can really take it on board. But there is no energy in that to open your heart. If your heart is already open, that's another thing. So, it's very important that whenever we learn, not only we try to grasp it to the best possible way, but also let it go inside our heart. Now, if you want to get such type of knowledge, which is nur, which has energy, which has attraction, which has power, you need to get it from someone who has already experienced it. You know, we have in some of our du'as about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya man lam hayata min hay. Allah is the one who has not received life from any living being. Okay? Allah has not received life from any other being. But apart from Allah, any other living being has received life from another living being. Okay? This is physical life, there is also a spiritual life. You cannot get a spiritual life unless you inherit, you receive it from someone else. Therefore, Imam Kazim salam said in a beautiful sentence, only five words. Amazing. La ilma illa an alimin rabbani. La ilma illa an alimin rabbani. If someone doesn't understand what Imam is talking about, may say, no, we can learn from any person. We should have no hesitation to go to any person to learn. We should go up to China to learn. We say, yes, but that's another thing. Ilm, which is nur, which is going to settle in your heart, should come from a person who has already achieved this in his heart. La ilma illa an aliman rabbani. So, you cannot create this, you have to receive it. You know, this is very important in Islamic spirituality. Of course, people may think this is mostly for Sufis, but this is not only for Sufis. Sufis maybe have talked about this a lot, but this is Islamic idea that you receive knowledge, you receive a spirituality, you receive light through a channel Allah is on the top, then the prophet, then the imams, then your teachers. Through your teacher, you get connected. Like a leaf on the tree. You have to have connection through branches and then to the root. A leaf, you know, just says, no, I want to benefit from every branch. I just to be just free. Once from this branch, once from another branch, it doesn't work. Wherever you are, 
You should establish your connections with the people that have already been connected. And they are connected through other people. Finally, they are connected to Imam and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyway, there are lots of things to say about this. Just let's go back to the hadith. Rasulullah says, you have to have a time every day that ya'ti ahl al You go to the people who have knowledge, the true knowledge, the real knowledge. Yansurunahu fi amr They help him in his religion. And they give you good advice. Do you think giving good advice is easy? It's very difficult to give good advice. Not just, just because you need some information, some expertise, some experience. No, it's more than that. Someone can give us good advice that he has a comprehensive view. He knows my condition right now, but also he knows what options are available for me in future. And he gives me advice in the way that paves my journey towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if that person himself is a person who is more concerned, for example, with dunya, his advice also only would put me in that direction. But if he himself is a person that can stand in a position that can look at dunya and akhirah, and find my chances with respect to dunya and akhirah and bring to me the best of both but without sacrificing akhirah for dunya then that person can give me advice it's not easy to give advice many people who give advice they just tell us their own limited understanding their limited success stories they share with us. It's not necessarily they are qualified for giving advice. Wasa'atun yukhalli bayna nafsihi walladhataha. Rasulullah says you need also a time period for pleasant, permissible halal. For lazza, for pleasure. Yeah? Because human beings are not like angels. If we were just angels, day and night we just study and you know pray and do good things. But we are human beings. We have some other needs as well. That if you don't look after them, <coughs> they can actually stop you from the other side yeah you have to give halal pleasure to your nafs so that then you can control your nafs when asked for haram <coughs> or you bribe him by giving halal so that your nafs listens to you when you want to take him to far and remote places. It's like a horse. Yeah? Some ulama say your nafs is like a horse. You have to tame it, but you have to also feed your horse. If you say just day and night I want to, you know, run this horse, then it will stop you on the way. But what is important is always to remember there is no energy in haram. Energy is in halal. Give your nafs halal lazza, but no haram lazza. If you give your nafs haram lazza, then 
you make a situation, the situation worse for you. You are taming a horse, but by giving the horse something that makes it violent and rebellious, this horse is not going to listen to you. Yes, he would listen to you only when you are feeding the horse with haram. It's very important. If we get used to doing haram, na'udhu then we will never have any feeling towards salat, any feeling towards study, any feeling towards charity, because your nafs is now just demanding more and more lazza. So, Rasulullah says, you need also to have a time for halal lazza in dunya. In this hadith, there is no mention of working. You know, something to make your earning. Maybe it is included in this part, something that you do for your dunya. But also we have hadith that mentions the time for making your income. Because you must know, whenever in our hadith, uh, we have number, for example, Imam says mu'min should have seven qualities, or another hadith says, you know, five qualities. This is a contradiction, because they didn't, didn't want necessarily to be exhausting everything. So based on the environment, on the meeting, on the audience, they gave up. In another hadith, we have from Amir al-Mu'mineen himself. That was from Amir al Mumin quoting Rasulullah. Lil Mu'min Salasu Sa'at. Mu'min has three types of time. That, that was four. But they matched. There is no contradiction. Fasa'atun yunaji fiha rabbah. The same thing. A time for whispering to your Lord prayer. Fasa'atun. <coughs> And there is a time that you have to plan for your livelihood, for your, you know, making your earnings, making some halal income. And a time for laza, eating, doing some uh, sport, going out, sleeping. So if you are a wise person, you have to be doing one of these three things. Either you do something for your ma'ash, means for your life, or something for your akhirah, for ma'ad, or laza, which is halal. So in some hadith, you have these three parts. Something for your akhirah, which includes prayer, learning, all these things. Something for making halal income, and something for lazza. Finally, the third hadith about this subject, then I share my own um, reflection. It's from Imam Qasim, alayhi salam. اجتهدوا في أن يكون زمانكم أربع ساعات. Do your best so that you can allocate time for four things. So you that four periods of time. ساعة لمناجاة الله. So a period of time is for dua, ibada, munajat. وَسَاعَةٌ لَأَمْرِ الْمَعَاشِ For having an occupation, something that gives you halal income. This is very important in Islam, to be productive, to be working. A person in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was healthy and young, but Rasulullah was told that he doesn't work. 
he is healthy, he is young, but he doesn't work anymore. Rasulullah said, Sakata min aini. He has been dropped from my eye. Means he, I have not that much respect for him. Why you are not working? Because your parents give you money or you get from, I don't know, government? <laughs> you have to work. This is why I say, even if you work, you get just the same amount or even less, it's better that you work. And even if you don't need to work, maybe you have inherited lots of money, you don't need to work. But if you don't have something important like a community service, whatever, still you have to work. Give it to other people. But work, especially, I'm talking about men. Men should be working. Men should be always busy. Even sometimes I say, just ask them to take the stones or rocks from this side of the room to the other side. But keep them busy. <laughs> so, work is very important. Ma'aj is very important. Then, Imam Qazim alayhi salam said, Sa'atun lemu'asharat al-ikhwan. You need also a time for meeting your brothers and sisters. Brothers meeting brothers and sisters meeting sisters. Okay? Or it's common meeting like this. Okay, but not calling, you know, a girlfriend sister. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, we deceive ourselves. You know, instead of saying, this is my girlfriend, this is my sister. We go to the same university, you know, and we work in the same, you know, group. No. This is a spiritual thing. مُعَاشَرَةَ الْإِخْوَانِ وَالثِّقَاتِ الَّذِينَ يُعَرِّفُونَكُمْ عُيُوبَكُمْ وَيُخَلِّسُونَ لَكُمْ فِي الْبَاطِنَ The people that are very honest with you. You know, unfortunately we think a good friend is the one who always, you know, flatters me or lies to me. My parents sometimes, you know, criticize me, but my friend never criticizes me. When I do something wrong, you know, my father, my mother gets upset, but my friend is very good. Even if I kill someone and go to him, he says, don't worry. <laughs> Let's have a coffee. Such a nice friend. But it's not friend, it's an enemy. This friend is just adding to your ghafla. Brothers who are thiqat, reliable, honest, they tell you your strength. They tell you your positive things. They give you encouragement. But also they tell you that you have some weaknesses. If in a meeting I make a mistake and make some people upset, who should first tell me this? My friend. Because my friend is concerned about me, doesn't want me to do something wrong. So you have to find friends that are honest with you. They encourage you, they love you, but also are honest. Not they are always flattering you or pushing you more into the wrong direction. This is not friendship. This becomes on the day of judgment enemy. Most of the friends may become enemies except those who are muttaqi. So we need also a time for meeting with our brothers and sisters who are reliable and honest.
especially I should tell you, for us living in an un-Islamic society, having good friends is very important. For our children to have good friends is very important. You cannot change the whole society into what you like, but at least have few good people around for yourself, for your family, for your children. Because we cannot survive on our own. Most of people cannot survive on their own. When Shaitan, I tell you this in a simple way, when Shaitan sees one person gets more encouragement to attack, when they say few mu'minin together, says no, this is not easy now. <coughs> There are few mu'minin together. Because maybe one of them is ghafil, but the other one will realize. So always you should be in association with mu'minin. Wasa'atan. <laughs> Another time is takhlawna fiha lilladhatikum fi ghayr muharram. Another time is for your pleasure those things that give you pleasure, which are halal. And Imam Kazim says, If you have the last one, like eating, drinking, going out, sometimes holidays, whatever, then you are able to have ibadah, you have uh, work and meeting with mu'mini. So, we never encourage people to isolate themselves and just keep doing ibadah or just keep doing, you know, charity work or just keep studying. You should have also halal lazza. Yeah? But this is in order to give you energy for the rest. This is not the ideal. You know, sometimes it seems we do the opposite. We work, we study, we pray to Allah, all for getting better food, more money, larger house. So everything is at the service of the last one. It should be opposite. Okay. With these three hadiths, you have a sample of our hadith about the way we should divide our time. These are major areas of our activities. But I want to give just a few points and let me see how, uh, uh, how much time we have? 50. Okay. Yes, yes, because I want to divide into two parts. Okay, inshallah, I will leave some time for questions. Few points I want to share with you. And again, this is not uh, all of the points that should be considered. These are few points, but not all the points. First, Our life is of utmost value. Wal asr. Why Allah swears by asr? Like now, <laughs> this is also asr. Because time is very important. Even Allah says, وَاللَّيْلْ وَالنَّهَارْ Time is so important that Allah swears by different portions of our day and night. Sometimes we think some people maybe they were very successful because by chance, by accident, or because of their family, 
because of the society, they have become successful. And I cannot be like that. But the reality is the story of success is written by every person himself or herself. You should write the story of your success. And this is written with the ink of time. That's what you need. You need time. If you don't utilize your time and you don't succeed, don't put blame on the world, on the creation, or na'uzu billah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, you should put blame on yourself. Every person has used the same time. And every person has enough of intellectual and spiritual capital to begin with. I'm not saying they have equal, but I'm saying they have enough to begin with. Time is the main factor. If you have control over your time, it's like if you use the ink, you can make many things. If you waste it, then don't blame other people. And I have an idea that I share with you. Maybe, inshallah, this gives you a kind of hope. I have the idea that if you really embark on a project with your mind and heart and spend the time which is available for you on that project and then god forbid you die before completing the project whatever is your project your pro i don't mean making a building necessarily i mean any project for example my project is to become a mormon that's my project of life my project is be a helper of imam mahdi whatever is your project your project is to teach people, whatever. If you embark on the project first, give your mind and heart to the project, and don't stop as long as you are alive, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will complete that project for you as far as your a spiritual benefit is concerned. As far as your spiritual benefit is concerned. Maybe that, for example, half-built mosque would remain like that. But what you wanted to get from that? Or maybe, for example, you were not able to help Imam Mahdi because still he has not come, for example. But whatever you wanted to get from that, you will get from it if you have given your mind and heart to it until the last moment of your life you were active and that's amazing so never be worried that my life has already passed i am now in middle or later stage of my life and i cannot achieve i cannot become for example a good alim I'm Old now, for example. No. If from this time you choose a topic, a subject that you want to master and work for it, give your mind and heart to it, don't stop till you die, inshallah Allah will resurrect you as a person who has achieved it. This is amazing. This means that actually there is no limit in your life. Yeah? There is no limit in your life. What is important is you plant the tree. Maybe in your life it starts bearing fruits, maybe it starts bearing fruits afterwards, but you are going 
to get the benefit definitely. So, the first thing is we should appreciate our life. Any moment of a life is very important. Secondly, we should be in control of our life. Unfortunately, sometimes we don't have plan for our life. For example, the first few years we are children, just play. Then, for example, people go to a school and, you know, secondary school, high school. Many people in that state, they don't have any plan unless <coughs> the plan is just to finish the high school. They don't do anything. <laughs> just, I have to finish high school. You have plenty of time around that. You should have lots of plan. Or, for example, I am doing a degree. Is this... The only thing that you can do in three years, four years, just to do a degree. You can do many, many other things. So sometimes we deceive ourselves by choosing one thing, which is clear and obvious, and say, this is what I want to do. And we actually lose 30, 40, 50 percent of our time not doing anything because everyone says, what are you doing? I'm a student. Or I have just started a business. Okay. This is good, this is you do it, but this doesn't occupy all your time. So, you should plan for your time. Two, not only days, not even two hours, at least two quarters. Some of our ulama, I heard from son of one of our very great scholars who was a role model. He said, my father never wasted any time. Even at home, thank you very much. Awesome. He was always doing something positive. Either spending time with family, but in a productive way. You know, sometimes I say, I spend time with family, but I'm, what I'm doing? I am just watching TV. This is time you spend with family? Yes, if you are all together watching TV together and, you know, in a sense of unity, maybe. But just to be physically there is not spending time with family. So, but if you have productive time with family, it's good. If you are, I don't know, studying, washing, cleaning, cooking, it's good. If you are studying, it's good. Working on the garden, it's good. But just sitting somewhere and doing nothing, this is not good. And nowadays, unfortunately, yes, as it comes to your mind, there are so many distractions. You see, in our generation, we spend less time on making income. Most of us don't need to work as hard as previous generations. Previous generations from sunrise to sunset, they had to work. And they had no holidays, nothing. They had to work. Now we can work much less and still have reasonable life. But it seems we are all busy. Everyone says, I am busy, I don't have time. Maybe it seems some thieves are stealing our time. Because we don't see any productivity that much. For part of our day, part of our week, but still we are busy. So, in the past, people were more active. And also because most of the activities needed physical activities, it was good also for their body. And, you know, they were fit, they were healthy. Now, we are not that much working physically, many of us. 
in people living in the cities, we don't have physical activities. We finish our work, maximum eight hours, for example, for most of people. Then we have plenty of time, but we are all busy. Even we cannot, for example, see our parents, or we cannot you know, spend time with family, with the community. We cannot go regularly to masjid. We are busy. Why? Because we are not planning. You think that something should happen that no one disturbs, no one, you know, for example, pushes himself into your life, then you have free time. So all the offices should be closed, there must be no school, nothing to do, then I am free. But even at that time, you are not free. They don't let you to be free. Unless you have plan. So, time is like a fertile land, but you have to cultivate. If you don't cultivate your time, if you don't plant anything and look after it, it will not give you any product. So, very important to know what you want to do with your time. Another point is, I think, apart from scholars and teachers and students in Islamic studies, because they need more, I think every person should at least have one hour every day for studying about his religion or her religion. At least one hour. This is very important. But sometimes you can do more. There are people who spend two hours, three hours every day driving or you know, on bus or uh, underground. Maybe you can do more. But at least one hour productive time. Then when you go, for example, on the bus, you can review. You can have two, three hours. But one hour productive time for a study. It's very important because in the same way that you give three meals to your body, at least you have to give few meals to your soul. One meal is your ibadah, but another meal is elm. Soul needs ibadah and elm together, otherwise we'll suffocate will not be able to function. And a study has to be a structured, not just a scattered ideas, not bits and pieces. You know, one of the problems of this age is if you don't plan it, of course, if you plan it, it's okay, but if you don't plan it, is that you have lots of data Lots of information, but without being able to make sense out of them. You know, you, there are two ways to deceive people. To make sure that they do what you want. One is not to give them information. The other is to give them too much information. <laughs> In both ways, they just become passive. And you can you know, decide for them what to do. Sometimes we receive so many scattered information, you know, messages, emails, text, links, video clips. But we don't know what is happening. Even you don't know how over time your mentality is being affected, your emotions being affected. Even without noticing, you feel you have become a very sad and hopeless person. I used to be a very energized person. Now I don't know what happened to me. Where the virus has come. Because all these things not only kill our time, but also they put us into certain direction. You should do opposite. 
you should immunize yourself by having healthy information, not junk information, <laughs> healthy information. And healthy information has to have always a structure. If you have a structure, then those things that come can actually be put into relevant places and make this structure better. And if they don't match, you can leave it aside. You know, imagine, for example, if you have a library, if you have shelves, and you have decided these shelves are for books on this subject, those shelves on other subjects, and you put everything in its own shelf, then you have a very organized library and you can always use. But if any books come, you just put it on the floor. Thousands of the books on the floor. What can you do? Even you cannot enter into that room. Even you are afraid of going to that room. So there are people who have books in the library, but because they cannot find it, they go and buy a certain copy. <laughs> So sometimes you have studied something before and you have all the notes. But you have no benefit because you have not organized it in a structure. So a structured study is very important. And this is not what you can design. A person or a group or a team who have experience, who have knowledge, they can design the structure. They give you the structure, and then you build it. But you cannot plan what you need without asking advice. My time is according to Iran, so what time is now? <laughs> 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 yeah. Twenty-nine. Okay. My last point, and then we go to question and answer. I wanted to say something about prioritizing, but uh, we don't have time. I just say one point. Quran tells us something which I'm sure you have all heard, but maybe we have not reflected enough. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that there is sabqat Allah wa man ahsanu min Allah sabq sabqat Allah if we want to translate literally means divine painting divine color divine painting and who is better in painting than Allah or whose color is better than Allah's. What does it mean? Before I say, what are your thoughts about this? Sabqat Allah. What is Sabqat Allah? Father? Instructor, a structure, how? Uh. Mm. Yeah. A structure is important, but I don't think this is directly related to a structure. Because sabqa is painting. And painting is something that is normally put on the surface. So a structure is internal. But after a structure, you need also to have a brush to paint. But what is your understanding of this painting? Father? Yes, but how do you relate it to painting? 
or color. Father? Yeah, but why we say in this way? Yes. Thank you. Anyone can add? Yes. Yes. <coughs> Anyone else? Fetra is included, but it's not on the... Yes. 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 Uh, all these points are relevant. So the way maybe we can put it in like this. You know, when we do different things in life, okay, these things should have a spirit that connects them together. You know, when you make a building, sometimes there are timbers, plaster, nails, many, many things that they don't look connected to each other. But then you paint. And with painting, you make them all connected to each other. And if there is any problem, will be covered. Yes? Any separation, any different materials, different, you know, even colors. This final color gives us one single face. One single face. Mormon's life should be like this. There is a time you eat, you sleep, you go for work, you go for a study. These are like different parts and they may look not related to each other. But if you brush all of this with a divine color, with love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the intention of serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then it becomes such a single beautiful face. Okay? So, Whatever you do, it's very important that can be part of this one single paint. This is very important. This is the harmony of the life of movement. Movement is not part of the time with Allah and part of the time doing his own things. Or his ibadah is for Allah, but his work is not for Allah. Even mu'min's lazza should be for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In the dua we say, Oh Allah, I ask you forgiveness for any pleasure which was not with your remembrance. So, remembrance of Allah is that paint that give you one beautiful single presentation. This is very important. If there are shortcomings, but you have been doing everything in this spirit, 
David will also inshallah cover it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive you and may even transform them to good deeds. But this is very important. I hope we reach the point that when an observer looks at us, okay, an observer, objective observer, not a friend who is too kind or an enemy who is too hostile. No, an objective observer looks at your life or my life, says, this person came and made a beautiful contribution to this world, which reminds us of his love or her love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the main thing. If this can be what an observer finds as overall result of our life, that's then the achievement. Okay, I stop here. So if there are questions, then. Alhamdulillah.